Hello, the following video is a recording from our ninth Artist Feedback AMA session held within Meta Jungle Discord. This session was originally held on Thursday, February 17th, and is hosted by Dan Hawk and Jason O'Rourke. Both are active photographers with a lot of in real life experience and also active NFT artists. We definitely appreciate the time and attention that they took to provide helpful feedback to the artists who participated. In this session, we're reviewing 12 artist collections and we cover a lot of information about curation and especially about details to include on your work. This was an awesome session, so let's get to it. I wanted to say right up front, thank you, Jason, for joining. Um, Last week I wasn't here because I was out and Mike Mike ran without me with Jeremy and and Mike is on vacation so I was like hey I'm gonna I'm gonna pull in a member from the from the community who's also a friend of mine so thanks Jason happy to be here okay so the format um, just so everybody kind of knows we try to stick to about ten minutes per artist uh, because we've got twelve and we've got two hours so <laughs> that's uh, we figure we we roughly make it through <laughs> uh, in time. Um, in a couple hours if we stick to that 10 minutes. So feel free to ask questions. And then um, I may ask uh, Boss Mom, if you've got, if you said you do have the questions pulled up, um, we may ask if, if there's any specifics. And I'll be kind of trying to look uh, back through the submissions as well for those. But um, the order we're going to go in is the same order we posted them in the in the group here. So we're going to start here with this one here, which is Mount Rainiest by ASB Photography. And I would love to just kind of start by taking a look through here. Um, this is a collection of, it looks like we've got eight photos. And I'm going to venture out here and say, without even looking at the description, that we're looking at Mount Rainier, <clears throat> mainly because I recognize it. Um, and let's, let's take a look here. Right off the bat, We've got a really concise, um, well-worded description here. Hello and welcome to my collection of photographs surrounding Mount Rainier. So that's obviously what we're doing here. With this collection, I'm actively trying to convey just how gorgeous the natural world is when you do not have actively clear skies, but instead are stuck in the fog banks. So this is, this is great. Uh, it's really clear what we're doing here. We have a theme. And then as we go looking through here, all of our pieces are priced at the same spot, except for these three. And it looks like we don't have any sales yet. Jason, what do you think? What do you, you got any thoughts? Uh, so um, one of the things that we were talking about when we were looking at which <clears throat> collection to pick up is um, ASP was saying he's new in this space. And uh, I'm not sure if he's in the, in the room at the moment. And I'm making an assumption it's a man, I think. I'm not sure where I get that, <clears throat> but either way. Um, so I, the first thing that jumped out to me in the descriptions is we don't get a lot of information there um, for the image description itself. I think the collection description is really good, um, but I think the artist name should be in the collection description. And then um, I, I also think there should be a little bio and artist information with each image description. And so for me, one of the things uh, joining the Meta Jungle community that really stood out to me uh, was those um, two uh, screenshots that Alpha likes to share all the time. Uh, I have actually saved them to my phone for a quick reference for, um, you know, seven or so description suggestions and seven or so uh, collections um, suggestions. So I don't know if there's a quick way to put those up in here. I don't have those myself easy to get to. So I, I would. Uh, second. I've got, I just grabbed the wrong one. Uh, I grabbed the same one twice. So let me, I have them, but give me a second and I'll figure out how to put them up here. Um, and I, I apologize think, if there's noise happening in the background here. My wife is blow drying her hair in the other room. <laughs> so uh, let me grab these and I'll see if I can figure out how to pin them real quick. But you know what I'm talking about with yep. the. Um, with those basic points. I, I what, think. Yeah, you look for those and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about kind of what we're looking at here. I, I clicked on this one and this is will be my feedback as well. While we can see the created by ASB photography, that is a 
that's generated by OpenSea or whichever place you mint. So that part is not part of the user added uh, description. And so what we're looking for is we want to see additional information added in this section here that tells that this is a one of one photo, that it's created by ASB photography, and uh, maybe some information about where it was taken. As much as it's in the description, remember that the, some of those things don't transfer from platform to platform. So that's a great way to kind of think about that. And I just, um, so if I am I live chat, that looks like uh, probably the best place to put these. So I'll put those um, over here. I just find this to be a great framework. I really appreciated, uh, you know, when I first get into the community, these came up. Uh, so that's one there. And, and see, we do have one of one on this photo. No, the additions are there. That's that's a good thing. Yep. But artist name, um, you know, date and location. Date isn't necessarily required, but some of these things are pieces of information that collectors will want to see. Um, and so I've added both of these in the uh, AMA live chat. Um, so I stole these from Meta Jungle. Uh, AT put them up for me when I first get in here, and I immediately saved them to my phone as a quick reference because I really think these are a good framework um, for the basic information you want to include in a description, um, and it really helps collectors understand a bit more about the pieces. Totally agree. So let's talk about the the photos here. Mm -hmm. I really really like this collection. Yeah. Um, these are, well, first of all, to say it as a photographer, this is very, these are clean. They're very interesting photos, uh, well exposed, really great use of uh, shallow depth of field. Uh, you know, these are, these are great. They have a bunch of really fantastic, uh, there's a bunch of layers to it. And I'm a big fan. I really like this work. Um, it's also really cohesive, right? They all go together, uh, similar location. You've got similar um, coloring to them and subject matter. So even even a piece of wildlife, it fits in well with the rest of the collection. Um, yep. So yeah, I thought this look, it was well put together. Um, just a little more detail would, would go a long way. Yeah. Um, one of the things I think is kind of interesting is that this, the, these photos, pretty in pink, downside up, up close in purple, good morning, my dear. all of these, look at the backgrounds. These are all, these all have a similar vibe, even though they're different, a little bit different color, even though this one's in focus, this one's focused out here, but has some blurry up here. This one is blurry back here. These are all, these have a, th a very common theme and also these are very obviously the same the same kind of area but very very up close and i i just think these are this feels like um almost like a study in an in an area and then that milky way shot on the drive-in i mean that's just a beautiful shot yeah it's pretty cool so i i think that we've got a, a really great this is just a great collection in general. I'm I'm a fan. I like it. Um, I was gonna go look and see if. Okay, real quick. Um, his main question is that even though he absolutely loves photography and the story that it tells visually, he's new to the space. Not sure how to write descriptions and captions for the collections as a whole, as well as an individual piece. If you would please give me some feedback on the descriptions. I my gut is that the individual descriptions are are good. I yeah. don't have any issue with the things you've said are are, are well said. The um, the way they're written is good. Uh, the grammar is, is good. It, it works. What I would maybe do, and, and this is a good one I wanted to click on just because there's not, while I like hearing the background of this is my favorite photo of the gallery, it's the only photo of mine I've printed and hung on my wall. That's really great. Talk a little bit more about what it is. Talk about... Um, where the location is because remember that even though it's part of a collection when a collector buys it it's going to live on its own in their collection separate from the gallery and so yeah. it's good so, to talk about where it's located say hey this is taken on a foggy morning in mount rainier national park 
Um, I'm guessing from knowing that area that it's probably um, uh, near Tipsu Lake. So I would <laughs> I would add something like that. Yeah, and again, I think including something about the overall collection, you know, I mean, it's a cut and paste for me. Um, you know, the the a short collection description goes on each individual image because, like you said, it moves out of. I mean, it doesn't move out of the collection, but in the collector's uh, display, it's not going to have that collection description right at its fingertips. Um, the number of pieces in the collection, again, these are, are things in those two um, screenshots, but I think those two things go together. So this is a one of one out of eight pieces in the collection. Um, and uh, and then, like I said, a, a little brief bio on the artist is another nice touch to include, I think. Exactly. So I think I think that uh, Alex, I think you are you're good to go. I think you just need to do a few little minor adjustments, and I think it's always good to know that the photography is solid, the collection, the curation, this is all solid. I think your collection is ready to go as is in terms of photos. You just need to round out the collection so that each piece has descriptions that stand on their own. Anything else that you want to add before we move on to the next one? Oh, I think that covers it. <clears throat> oh, great. Um, and this is, I'll just say, we this one stood out for us right from the beginning, and we wanted to jump in and, and cover this one right at the top because you're brand new to the space, and I think that's great, and you're headed off to a good start. Okay, moving on. The second one we're going to tackle is I Have My Drone, and this is by Niazi Gergen. Um, and I uh, really, really think this is a great... A, a great collection. Wanted to dig in and uh, and and kind of see what we've got here. So, right off the top, um, here's our description. Every photographer goes on a different quest to capture a different perspective. However, photography, which has become one of the the indisputable arts, indispensable arts of our world, is developing day by day, and we use various tools to capture it in the best possible way. Recently, the photos we took with drones have given us a different vision as a point of view. Now we started to see the eyes of the drone, not with our own eyes. In this collection, I share with you the drone photos I took from nature and agricultural land. This aerial collection consists of 10 special photos. All of them is one of one edition. So in short, how about looking at the sky? So I'll just say right off the bat, this is probably about twice as long as it needs to be. And what I would probably do is check in with, um, there's, there's some grammatical things that make it a little bit tough to read and it kind of says the same thing multiple times. So I would say it might be good to just check in with somebody who has, and I'm guessing maybe there's a, a language uh, thing here. So check in with somebody who maybe has a little better grasp on that to help with uh, tightening this up and just editing and getting a little bit better. Yeah, and, and the other thing, <clears throat> so it's interesting because when you get into the individual descriptions on these pieces, I think Niazi's done a lot of what we want to see there. I might shift the image description to the top and the bio information uh, down with the location, the date, and the edition. But what we're missing on the collection description, and I know um, I can imagine that part of the challenge is it, it is a lot of text there. And I believe OpenSea has a limit to the word count or the character count, rather. Um, but I would like to see the photographer's name in the collection description as well. Um, so I think as you, you fine tune that collection description, including uh, the photographer name there is, is important. Right. Well, and one of the reasons I think that's important is that this format with the underscore, that is maybe something that's going to not live. It's not going to wear well long term. So having your name without kind of weird Twitter open C formatting would probably be really useful. And you've got it here, which is great. I would right. put this with this stuff right yeah. at the top. Yeah. So looking through these, I'm just going to, I'm just going to point out, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to like this one because I think it's great. Um, yeah, that really one's my like, favorite by far. I like this one as well. Um, this one here as well. 
this one is already sold. It's fantastic. We're going through favoriting in this collection, but but again, that's why when we first looked at this one, um, again, they go very well together. Uh, there's some contrasting images. I do like the the split frame, natural balance, and minimal tree. Um, and then I really like the, the the paradise of meanders, the winding river shots. These are beautiful. Yeah. I'm going to take a look at this, and I, I would encourage in the um, in here in the AMA to these links are all in the uh, the submissions channel. So if you want to go look at these while we are too, the, you can look at these in much higher resolution. But this is pretty breathtaking. Yeah, there's a pretty amazing color happening in these reflections. Wait, and he's got multiple sales on this collection, so I'm shocked this one's still sitting there. Yeah, it really is beautiful. So, if I were going to kind of give the critique here, you know, when I look through these, you've got really, you've got a lot of things happening here. You've got a lot of great descriptions, and I actually, I really like this. I think that your descriptions are really solid all the way throughout the collection. I looked through these a little bit last night. Diagonal lines, yep. you know. You... And again, the only other thing that I would look at is including the overall collection uh, theme, title, number of pieces, um, and you know, and just a quick couple lines on the collection itself. I'd put that below the rest of this description, but that's the only thing that's missing on the individual descriptions that I see. Yeah. So because this one has some sales, I would say it, this is connecting well. And I think that's, that's a good thing. And ultimately, you know, some of the strongest pieces, like this one's great. The, these are great, the ones that have already sold. Um, to me, I, I can't believe this one's still here. Right, right. <laughs> that's, that's and really, this one's great too. Grab. Yeah. Um, no, this is, this is great work. Um, well done. Not a whole lot of feedback to give here, except just tighten up and, and edit your your main description, add some information about you, um, a little more bio information, and then maybe rearrange some of the some of the text on your just individual descriptions. And I think from there you're good to go. Yep, I agree. All right, let's move on. Um, 10 ghosts. So anybody who's been in the space here very long already knows uh, Jose, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm saying it right there. Right. I've never actually been in a space with, with him, um, and I know that he's not. He mentioned that this was a rough time to try to get on a call with us, so wanted to, wanted to just dive in on this one right off the bat and just say I think this is really breathtaking work. Um, it's really distinctive. Every time I see it on Twitter, every time I see it in any kind of space, um, it stands out. I know exactly what it is, which is maybe the biggest compliment you can give a photographer is to say that you recognize their work without even seeing their name attached to it. Yeah, no, this is definitely, you know, it's his work as soon as one pops up. Yeah. I'm kind of curious. Um, I'm going to look back here if I can see. Okay. So his, the things he was asking about. Um, so he's, uh, he's in Spain. Um, he mentioned these are waterscapes and long exposure enthusiasts. Obviously, <laughs> um, his questions is, is the story nice enough? Does it look cohesive? It, it's the, is the NFT space open to black and white landscape photography? And then after the rarest piece is gone, are the pieces left attractive to collectors? And then do the collectors have interest in the perks? Um, so I think if I remember right, this is... I can't, I can't remember. I was thinking this was one of the gotcha. Um, it was set up as a gotcha when you first dropped the collection, which is one where you, when you buy one, you just got a random one. Oh, interesting. I think he turned that off. Cause it, well, looks like, at this and it looks like nine of them have already been collected. So he's only got the two left. Yeah. Yeah. He so it looks like you run on these. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty sure when he dropped it, it was set up as a gotcha, which meant you just got a random one, but it looks like he turned that off. And it's down to um, 
just those two pieces uh, in the top right corner that are left. Now, it, obviously, this is Sloika, so if you're more familiar with this than I am. Um, but these descriptions are so short on the individual pieces, it doesn't seem to have hurt his ability to sell them. Right. Um, but I, you know, I would have put a little more information into the descriptions if it was uh, the next collection I was setting up. Yeah, that would be the biggest change I'd make. It's a little tricky to give heavy critique on a collection that's basically almost sold out. Right. <laughs> but I think I think I think you're right. I think that potentially, um, I mean, these are great. These are actually interesting. Slim and tall. He is slim and tall, but sadly, he's alone. <laughs> I, I don't Gunsmith mind the perfect. one lines. I think those I, are are. You know, it, I think it fits well with the minimal images too, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so that's the piece that works. It's just where do you include, you know, the information about the addition? Well, the addition stuff's all covered in the properties. I see that. Yeah. So let me throw something out there that this is the first like a one I've looked at. Mike may have, but it's the first one I've looked at in this feedback channel. And here's the, one of the things that's interesting is that Alpha has given us really clear guidance about what he likes to see in the description on OpenSea. And the main reason why is because OpenSea doesn't have, it has areas for properties and for, you know, of course, the artist's name. But uh, Sloika has a lot more detailed information. So one of one is included. The, all of this stuff is included as part of the Sloika how they do things. So they parse all this information out of the NFT, which means that adding it into the description may be a little redundant in some ways. Okay. Um, so in this case, I think it kind of works to keep it minimal. Um, it's just good to understand that if you look at these, these particular pieces, all of these are also going to show up in OpenSea. So you can go look at them in OpenSea and you can see them and you can see what they're going to look like. So if, if I'm just going to do that while we're while we're here. So, so Dan, the only thing, so when I look at all this property information, I still don't see the artist's name. Is that somewhere in this process? I'm going to oh, try to the creator, try yeah, find the creators it. there. Okay, so here I have found, this is the collection, how it looks. Okay, and so let's let's pick one, slim and tall. We were looking at that one. This is what that particular metadata, the way it's created in Sloika, this is what it looks like when you pull it over. So here's our description. Here's our properties. So most of it's there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good I would, to know. And here's your, even your contract address. What I would say might be useful, and I actually added this when I minted mine, I added right here in the description that it was a one of one. I did not add my name beyond that, but I did add that it was, and I, the reason I did that is because when I go back over here, one of one is included in the, in the Sloika metadata, but it's not included when it comes over to OpenSea. Okay, that's good to know. But here's the deal. There's not a whole lot of critique with here, Jose. This is beautiful work. You've obviously connected with connect with the collectors. Um, I think that the fact that the church has already been bought doesn't doesn't impact anything. I don't think people were really buying them hoping for the church. I think they're buying them because it's beautiful work. Um, yeah. Obviously, the space is open to black and white work. Um, you're selling. We are we're going to probably look at some other black and white work today. In addition. My friend Vieri um, Badazzini has sold a ton of really beautiful black and white fine art pieces at high. Black and white has a place here. Um, the perks. Uh, that's not really it. I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe not dig into that because I'm not quite sure how to find the information about perks here. Yeah, I mean, I think in the MA chat, um, I think it's Armand said, yeah, it was a gotcha. So so that might have been what the perk is, and it's gone now. Yeah. I didn't see if there was, I know there were some perks, but I don't know what it was. Anyway, beautiful work. Let's move on, um, because 
Jose, you know what you're doing. You nailed it. The story is very good. This, the pictures, they speak for themselves. I think that's maybe what this is down to. And it's incredibly cohesive. Like <laughs> your number two question, you nailed yeah. it. Yeah. Good. Okay, let's let's move on um, to Lauren's uh, another Slika uh, collection. Um, and Lauren, you're I know you're here in the room, so if you want to go ahead and and join us, that will be awesome. Um, feel free to unmute and 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 talk if you like. Awesome. Oh, just wanted to say hi and thank you. Hey, Lauren. Glad, glad to have Lauren, you here. You sold one of these. When did this sell? Uh, yeah, so it officially dropped last night, and I sold it during my drop space. So I think oh, cool. it sold like around 7.30 p.m. Central. I was going to say, when, when we looked at this yesterday, I didn't think you had any sales yet, so that looked like it was a, an update. So good. Congrats. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was very excited. The collector who bought it uh, had a connection to White Sands, so that was really cool. That's great. This is really beautiful work, Lauren. Um, so let's let's dig in a little bit. Um, first of all, I, I'm just going to say it's it's almost cheating to to do things on Slika because the entire collection is created up front before any of it's minted, which means you have to think through all this stuff and. Um, the team at Sloika is helping proofread and tighten everything up. <laughs> so it's a little different from doing it on your own on OpenSea, right? <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like that about the Sloika process. I mean, I, so I'm a writer already, like I work in marketing and communication, so that part really comes naturally to me, but I really appreciated that Sloika makes you think through all of your descriptions, your writing, your properties, everything up front. So you just you have it all ready to go and you're not, you know, just kind of like waiting at the last minute to get everything set up. Exactly. So let's let's take a look here a little bit. I'm gonna go go back here. Um, right off the bat, I'm just gonna read this. My road leads into the desert, Dune. A few hours among the shining gypsum at White Sands National Park changed my artistic journey forever and ignited a love affair with this location reality bends to fantasy. The dunes at White Sands are never static. They move with the whisper and gusts of the wind. They are shaped by shifting light and shadow. I never expected these rolling desert hills and valleys to become my most treasured music. It's a vibrant and ephemer uh, <laughs> ephemeral landscape with delicate textures constantly transformed by a stray caress of sunlight or a gently darkening sky, darkening sky. Like the spice melange of Arrakis, the dunes present a different face every time you photograph them. This series of eight one-of-one -one images was captured over the course of one perfect November day, getting lost and finding myself within the intoxicating white sand spice. That is really beautiful. You've done a great job there. Um, I'm a fan. Um, hands up to that. That's fantastic. The yeah, luminosity, look at that shot. Look at the detail in that. Beautiful, beautiful work. Um, I'm going to... Hey, there we go. Good job, Slika, adding, uh, adding the dark mode. <laughs> I'm dark mode all the time. So, oh, you know, and again, I'm sorry. This is I haven't played with Slicker a lot, but you know what I really like that OpenSea lacks is you're in one image and you've got the rest of the collection right there. Uh, Pretty slick, right? Age through that is a huge advantage. Yep. Okay, so as we were talking through, I think we have to kind of almost start thinking about Slicker a little differently because. You don't need to add as much stuff because it's down here, but uh, good description. I think this works because you've got, you've written such a great um, uh, opening piece for the collection. The only thing, and I know, Lauren, one of the things that, that came up when we were choosing who to cover is that Sloika, everything's minted up front and you can't really, right? <laughs> we know that. So our critique is not going to be that you need to go change anything. Um, I think this works really well. I think for future, the only things that I would maybe consider um, is is maybe adding something else into this section here that carries through if it leaves, you know, if it gets resold, it's going to happen on OpenSea most likely. And so adding something that says something about it being one um, and something about the location because this won't live inside of this collection once sold 
Like it'll still have connection back to it, but the individual person could see it separate from this collection. Got it. That's so good to know. I didn't uh, realize all of that coming into minting this work, so I really appreciate that. And next time I do a collection, I'll make sure to be a little more thorough about uh, the different properties in the description. Well, and, and let me say this. Let me kind of back up even myself and say that I know these are properties down here, right? Time of day, location, color. So this will travel with it. At least we hope that that will always be parsed and shown off. But sometimes it's good to just go like, what do you need to include here to make sure that on first glance people can tell what it is, you know? It might be good in the description to say this is a one of one, number two of, or number four of um, this of this particular collection. So uh, we're splitting hairs here, but it's great. You've done really good description here. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's fantastic yeah. advice. I think, Lauren, the other thing that you can look at is is do what Dan just did, right? Pull this collection up in your open sea and see what's missing from your perspective. Um, and then the next time you build one, that's the information you want to try to pull through. Speaking of which, this is what it looks like in open sea. <laughs> I'm I'm awfully impressed with how it parses stuff. So yeah. looks pretty good. Um, and you notice that it's not for sale here. And that's one of the things that's interesting is that um, until it's been sold, it's not going to show up here. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. Primary sale has to go through Sloika. And the one that is <clears throat> the one that's sold. Let's take a look here. Which one is it? Oops. Uh, it's Serenity. Which one is it? Uh, number seven, Serenity. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so this one shows that it's owned by somebody. Oh, but still. But, it's, but there's but there's no but there's not going to be any history of the sale because the sale didn't happen here. Right. And until they list it on OpenSea, it's not available. You'd have to make an offer on it. Exactly. Okay, so um, Lauren. The questions that you'd asked, is the collection and color grading cohesive? I think that we can say yes, that is yes. <laughs> the, the color, while the color may be slightly different from piece to piece, uh, it works because your subject matter, your shapes, the way that you, even though the colors may not be identical from piece to piece, there's so much um, consistency. These are all obviously part of the same work. Um, yep. Yeah, writing and descriptions tell a very compelling story. I I love the way that you've uh, I love the way you've set it up with your collection description. But it happens when I'm on campus too, so like it's not just you know, isolated. And then um, I think every piece does stand alone. What could you offer in future collections? Um, you know, I think this is going to be a tough one, and this I will just say. I love this work. The thing that you'll have to have to figure out then is, are you pigeonholing yourself here by by making just desert textures like this? Um, I know that I know that you also have some great work um, as a storm chaser. So I don't I don't know that it that there's anything specific here that is pigeonholing you at all. And in terms of um, offering different kinds of work for the future. You just need to be willing to tell a compelling story, even if it's different from this. Right. Yeah, and Dan, you know me, I'm all over the map with, with the different stuff yeah, that I, I do. So to me, this is, it's good that this is a nice cohesive collection that all goes together. Um, oh. It's different than your other work, which helps distinguish it, I think. I think that's valuable. Um, you know, if you're gonna build a collection offer something different than what you're selling elsewhere i think that's important that it, it stands alone um yeah i don't i don't see any reason why <clears throat> this doesn't work and then and then as you work on some of your other southwest pieces um they can have a different theme and a different cohesion exactly um and then her last so question yeah oh, sorry i just wanted could i comment really quick um i just wanted to say thanks for that because i was also wondering if i was maybe 
making, you know, digging myself into a niche because I really do feel like I've kind of like found a calling in photographing dunes, but I, I do so much more than dunes. You know, I do have storms, I have landscapes, I have astro. And um, so I just appreciate y'all's comments on that. And um, I was just trying to balance like, okay, how do I establish myself in this market and distinguish myself as an artist, but still kind of like retain my identity in these other areas too? Yeah. No, I think that's fair. It's fair to ask those questions. And, you know, like we have some mutual friends. Um, Tara Workman is somebody who has done some beautiful work in this in this genre. Um, and I think any of us that are shooting these kinds of dune scenes can't help but be thinking of her work and Alex Noriega, you know, people like that. And I think it's just good to realize, like, they are able to have broad careers, too. They're able to share other work. So I don't think you need to worry about that. And you just, you've done a great job of encapsulating this particular collection. Now, the next one, tell a compelling story that stands alone from this one. It's different, right? Yep. And you'll be good to go. Um, your last question, I think, is, is worth addressing just because, you know, you said, do collectors see the merit in new platforms like Sloika? Or is there a trend to buy from more established marketplaces like Foundation, UNC, et cetera? <laughs> We actually talked a little bit about this on the Meta Jungle space last night. Um, and um, Alpha Trilogy let it slip that I basically, not, I didn't talk him into it, but I basically said, hey, um, I'm dropping something on Sloika and I really want you to look at it. And here's why it's awesome. Um, and I actually sent him a couple of uh, sold out collections and said, this is what the collection, these are, these are sold out and this is what they look like and see. Um, I think it's an education thing. And while as much as I love Sloika, I mean, like, look at the screen. This is gorgeous, right? The way that these are presented is truly focused on photography. The thing that's missing, and I don't think it's anybody's fault, is that we just need more collectors there. And I think that collectors, when they see that these are the, the, the tokens for these are still ERC-721s, they're still, they still show up great, over in OpenSea, as long as they can see that, they're going to begin to come here knowing it's a beautiful platform and that it's a great place to buy. So I think it's it's kind of up to us as artists, and it's up to Sloika to begin to to pull in more artists, and more conversations about the prop platform. But right so, now, as it stands, if you're going to sell something on Sloika, you're going to have to do all the normal marketing that you have to do to sell it on any platform. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So from my perspective, I have a couple of people that have collected multiple pieces um, and one bought one from OpenSea and one from Foundation. So to him, it didn't really matter which platform the work was on. He just wanted to buy those pieces. Um, and so I think to some extent, collectors will follow your work where it is. Um, and so I think if if this platform is comfortable to you, it's going to be you marketing it to um your, your current collectors and and that'll help pull in new collectors but, but like dan said i think i think there is an education anytime it's a new platform yeah and i mean to throw out there next week on the 21st minting goes live on the savage now <laughs> so get ready because there's new platforms that are going to keep popping up and right. they're going to be different and they're going to operate differently and they're going to kinds of collectors and different kinds of artists it's ultimately up to you to figure out, you know, if you're going to rely on the network and rely on the marketplace, well, I mean, then you're relying on something you can't control. So ultimately telling the story of what you are selling and why you're selling it and to, driving collectors to the place that you're most comfortable, the place that best represents your work, like that's going to be your job, right? Hopefully that helps. 100%. Thank you all so much. And I think that's I think that's great feedback. If I could just interject just a little, because um, I totally agree with what you guys have said, and I absolutely love the thought of long term. And we do have to keep in mind that new marketplaces will be coming online all the time, and so knowing how this works with OpenSea is great, but also keeping in mind that OpenSea may not be the end all down the road. So thinking about how each platform is going to interject, making sure Jason and you know to reiterate, making sure you 
you're putting in what you want there to be with your piece long term, because it may not work the same if it's then going to be sold on another marketplace down the road. But if you've put it in your description, you know, it's going to be there. And then from, you know, the part of what we talked about last night was definitely Silica and how great it is, but also talking about the usability from the collector standpoint, thinking about, you know, is it something that's straightforward and easy for the collector to use um, is an important part of making that decision as to where to put your work to. So that's exactly. all I wanted to say. No, that's <laughs> great. Thanks for interjecting that. I think, and I'll just say this as a, I'm not a big time collector. I've got a few pieces, but man, I can't, I haven't seen a better interface for browsing photos. Right. Yeah. And and the buy everything about this process. So, I think Completely it's a great agree. <laughs> it's a great platform. Okay, Lauren, thank you so much for being here and for sharing this stuff. And best of luck with selling your 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 collection here. This is this is good work. You should be proud of it. You want to move thank on, Jason? Yep. <laughs> you bet. Okay. So we're gonna move on to India Festival. This is uh, Sri Moam, is, is, the, is the artist. He is, but um, he prefers the live chat for interaction. So if you want, I can leave that open and read um, the interactions to you. Sounds great. And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna try to find, uh, one of, I wanted to find it in, the, in, our, in our chat. Do you, do you have his, uh, the, the questions he had asked for uh, feedback. Yeah, I sure do. Um, I had it here and I lost it. You're all good. First, he says, hi, all, and thank you for the opportunity. But he actually has four questions, and it's uh, he would like feedback on the four images that have been in the collection for a while. Um, is it okay to release the second volume of the India Festival? In what case is it recommended? May I know when images can be deleted generally? I want to understand what it is recommended. And is it okay to reach out to collectors personally or only in spaces? Okay, great. And I found it here as well. So I've got the list in front of me. So <clears throat> I think, first of all, Jason and I, Jason, remind me why we picked this one. Because we, we had a reason. <laughs> no, we, I mean, I think we were looking I like at it, color We were this. talking about it. Yeah. Um, the color in this, this is a, a really, there, there's a, a few different collections out there, I think, that look at some of these festivals in India, um, but this one's really well done. Um, and, and again, you're looking at, there's only four pieces remaining. Most of the collection is sold out. Um, I don't, I think he may be asking whether he should delete these four before moving on to a new collection. And I'm, I mean, Four remaining images are strong enough that I I wouldn't feel compelled to delete them. Um, I know I I sort of have moved forward uh, whether stuff sells out or not. Um, to me, this is part of the full collection, so I I wouldn't necessarily not look at what he wants to do next. Um, but I think deleting is is really a personal decision. Um, uh Sorry, he says, yeah, that is what he is asking. Right. Um, so, I mean, I that image is, is beautiful. The one cool, right? <laughs> the backstage at, at the, um, I, I just feel like eventually, like to me, sometimes when you put out new work, it brings in new people looking at what you're doing. And so to me, they may eventually come back to this original collection and see these pieces that are still available. Um, and I think there's, there's value to having them. I, yeah, I, I tend to agree. And let me, let me just kind of share this. So when we look at, when we look at all, I'm just going to pull up the whole collection. If OpenSea will behave. Yeah, we've got 12 items here, right? If there's only four left and you've had success and you've sold a bunch of these, I don't think, I, th I think that you need to have a little bit of, you need to decide for yourself. This is beautiful. There's, there's no reason to delete that image. It's a really beautiful image. Um, I, I feel like this one's maybe a little weaker. It maybe isn't quite as strong as the rest. I mean, like, look at this right here. This next to this, just we're not even in the same, <laughs> you know, it's not the same. This True. is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. I mean, these are this is a really great collection. If you decide you want to to maybe delete one or two, 
to just have it be tighter, you can do that. I don't think there's a problem there, but I don't think you need to. And I, I don't think that you need to feel like there's some sort of, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to say something a little common. The idea of scarcity is a construct. It is, it's something that's made up in order for you to, in order for there to not be other choices. In this case, you've proven yourself, this work is legitimate. You don't need to delete work to make this more valuable. You know, what's interesting is it, I just favorited those two. Um, again, I think the 12 pieces, I don't feel compelled to delete something, but if you wanted to make it a nice round 10, um, those, those, the one that you pointed out with the boats um, and the, the bull taming would probably be the two that I would remove if I removed any at all. Um, but what's interesting is I favorited the other two that haven't sold yet. And they have more likes than most of the rest of the collection, even before I did that. Um, so I, I definitely would not remove those two. Agreed. Yeah. And he uh, just asked um, that he, he said he has, uh, sorry, he has another set of fest festival images. Is it recommended to release the second set or move to a new complete theme? You know, it kind of depends. Are they as good as these ones? <laughs> That's ultimately for me. They need to be as good as this one here, Rhythm of Colors, or Surrender. These, Yeah, these and, and I mean, I kind of have a different philosophy there. Um, I personally, you know, I've got my, my monk seals out, I've got some geckos out, and I've tried to make sure that what I'm putting out is different than what's already there. Um, so to me, I might wait on that next festival collection until these last two or four have sold. And I would probably focus on something different. Um, yeah. But that's just, just my opinion. No, I actually like that. I, I would say, if you're going to go release something different, go for it. You don't need to wait for that. If right. you're going to release more festival, then you probably need to sell this out first. And I think it's okay to maybe delete a couple of them if, if you feel like they're not quite as strong. Right. Yeah. Um, so getting into your questions as well. Um, may I know what images can be deleted? We already told you that. Um, I, I think this one and this one are both not quite as strong. I think this is a rock star image and you should definitely keep it. And yep. so is this one. Yep. And then is it okay to reach out to collectors personally or only in spaces? I have a very strong opinion on this. I think it is totally cool to reach out to collectors um, personally. And I will tell you that nearly all of my have come from connecting with collectors outside of spaces or like there's a couple where people have found me in spaces but almost every sale has come from having conversations with collectors first yeah and i'm i mean i am somewhat similar and i find a lot more success recommending my friends to people that have collected my work that's true um, you do <laughs> but i but i tend to have conversations with the collectors that are totally unrelated to buying from me um, so that to me, that's the relationship building that you're doing. Uh, so rather than, you know, pitching, Hey, I've got two pieces left in this collection. Would you take a look? It's more of, you know, just talking to them about what they've collected recently, you know, what they're looking at. Um, I certainly think, especially if you'd release new work, that's a good opportunity to say, Hey, I know you collected from me in the past. Just wanted to give you a heads up that something new is coming. Uh, you know, if you're interested, great. Just let me know. And, and I know some of my friends have done that, and a lot of the stuff is sold before they ever even get to the market. Um, and so I think some collectors value getting a sneak peek on on that yep. kind of thing, um, yep. without necessarily feeling like you're coming back to the same well trying to sell more stuff to them. To them, they they've already shown an interest in your work. So they already recognize the value of what you're doing. And so to give them that sneak peek, I think is a bonus to them having collected your work as opposed to being spammy, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, you have now increased your own value, not just by showing them your work, but by showing them other work that might complement yours and helps them with their collection. Yeah, this is great work. I think we've answered the question. Um, thanks for sharing and uh, thanks for uh, engaging here in the chat with us too.
Um, yeah, he wanted to say thank you so much for your valuable suggestions. And it looks like he's typing right now, too. So <laughs> Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one. If he's got something he wants to say, feel free to interject. Yeah, of course. Okay, so next one is Daniel V. Uh, and I'm Vigne, I think is how you say his name. Um, Daniel Vign- Vigne. Oh, and he's here. He's here. Perfect. Let's Let's get him in the room. Yeah, he actually hey. just put in the group chat, too. Sorry, Daniel, I was just going to read it for you. I didn't know if they had it opened or not. Ah, <laughs> uh, got it. I see. Hello. Hello, guys. Uh, do you hear me? Uh, we yes. can, yeah. Uh, nice. Uh, hey there. Uh, just, um, sorry because I speak English very bad. <laughs> and then I'm uh, a little nervous. And... Uh, 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 I have prepared a little introduction. Uh, do you want to tell about it? Well, I've got your I've got your stuff that you talked about here, and I'm happy to read it for you, um, if that's okay. 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 Nice. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this space. And uh, my name is Dani Vigné, <laughs> it's, Vign- Vign- <laughs> it's a, a letter of Spain. I am a landscape photographer from Spain. I love to photograph sunrise, sunsets, night photography, and, and aerial photography with drone. And I have always liked to photograph the sun and perform the sun star technique. Uh, the sun star consists of tracing the, the sun. When we close the diaphragm, diaphragm of our lens on a clear day and shot and shoot in front of the sun, uh, it forms if it, it forms a small artifact that makes the sun crash. Each lens uh, does it in in a different way. I use a Sony full frame equipment and I found a time ago that the that the lens Sony sixteen 1655 a, 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 a four <laughs> is the sure. best sun star for me. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, that's great. And I, I make the sun star with that lens. Uh, in any case, I use Photoshop to generate the, the sun star. And I took uh, two shoots. I took a photo with A22 with bracketing to get the best sun star. But uh, as you all know, at 8.22, the lens d- does not have much quality. Uh, for this reason, I take another photo with 8.16, covering the sun with a little stick and bracketing. And after, in Photoshop, I apply a mask and I keep the, the 8.16 aperture photo. And, and the sun of the 22 aperture. And, and now uh, and I made my collection waited for the sun five months ago. Um, at the beginning of January, uh, I have, I started to have sales. In total, uh, six sales. And, and I noticed that all sales where with photographers with the sun, with sun star, uh, I, I want to I want to say uh, the, the sales there are uh, there are photo, photos with sun star. Yeah. And I <laughs> sorry sorry for my English guys. No, that's okay. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, so I thought uh, it would be best that all photographs were with the sun star. And for this reason, I removed uh, some photos without sun star and also made some change in some photos. And okay. Well, and why, don't, all Daniel, photos... Why, don't, why don't you let us, um, so I, 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 I think I got the gist of that. Do you want us to kind of dig in a little bit and answer some of your questions? Yes. Okay. Okay, so Jason, you um, you kind of picked up on that. It's yep. sort of what you yeah. said in uh, his questions in front of me too. So yeah, so so I've, I'm just parsing here a little bit. There were originally 20 photos. He culled it down to 17 and got rid of the ones that basically didn't have the sun stars and kind of leaned back into this you know, collection 
focused on the sun as the protagonist. Um, he asked if 17 photos a good number. I think that, I mean, I think it's fine. I don't know that 17 or 20 or 15, it doesn't really make a difference. None of those, right. none of those numbers really mean anything per se. Right. It's really a matter of, um, you know, personal preference. Seeing, yeah, it's personal preference. And I think really looking through and saying, for you personally, you just have to decide, is there anything that doesn't fit? That is there any image here that isn't of the same quality as the rest? And um, so, Jason, I would love for you and I to kind of talk about that a little bit and to look at the actual images. Yeah. And to, so, and to, to me, it's not a quality question. I definitely think these are all the same quality, but I do have one that kind of stands out to me as very different than the rest. Um, and that's that number 12. Um, because the rest all seem to be very landscape driven. And then you've got the magic sunshine in Amsterdam. So to me, oh, it's sold already. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it fits in perfectly with the collection. I didn't say anything at all. Um, that is too funny. I didn't catch the fact that it was already sold, which is why it's down there on the bottom. Um, you got good taste. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, again, I, I do think I agree with you, though. The 17 numbers is it's just an arbitrary number. So uh, the collection description, um, back to the same old, same old, uh, having something with your name in there, I think is important. And that sort of is the same thing. You've got a lot of the detail in the individual descriptions. Um, so I think all of that I is there. But once again, I would tie it back to the collection and how many pieces are in the collection, um, because that's not currently in the individual descriptions. And understanding that some of them are sold, so you can't change the descriptions on those. Right, right. But your descriptions are pretty good here. I, I think you've got all the information you need. You've got location, edition, artist, title. That's all great. Um, okay. Maybe the created by an artist. You don't need both of those, but... Um, more is okay. It's not, you're not hurting. Uh, I think I agree. I agree with Jason. I think that the Amsterdam one, um, this is always after the fact. It's already sold. In right. future, as you're curating your own work, this one kind of stands out as maybe not belonging. And then I'd also say that if you are really getting nip about Sun Stars, some of these, like number 14, um, doesn't really fit. It doesn't have the same the while the sun star has become a thing that shows up in all of them it's missing in that one um, yeah so 14 the other one that sort of stood out to me a little bit um is uh number seven proud peaks um and that's because it's a snowy scene and right. so for me everything else is so warm in this collection um it's a beautiful image there's nothing wrong with the image itself but it does sort of look different than the rest of the collection to me. This is really beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. I so, Daniel, I think if anything, what we're kind of getting at here is that the photography is really solid. You've got right. really beautiful work here. And ultimately, it just comes down to a question of curation for you. Some of these are really beautiful images, and maybe they don't, maybe they belong, maybe they're standalones or they're part of a different collection and they don't fit here as well. But it doesn't mean that they're not great pieces that won't find a collector. They just may be taking away from this collection by being. And okay. some of them you can't do anything about. Amsterdam, it's just there. You sold it. Yeah. It's... <laughs> um, the other thing that's something that's kind of interesting to think about is that to realize that sometimes just because something's sold doesn't mean that it has to stay in this collection. We can DM offline about that or... Uh, outside of the space, but th I I have pieces I've literally seen that they were part of a collection and they're now part of a different collection. So just know that that is a possibility. There, that, but you need to make sure your collector's cool with it. Right. Yeah. I, I have I have one piece that I sold that um, to a collector and it was the only piece I sold from the collection. You know what? I want to nuke this collection, and so I created a new collection. The piece in there with some others that were similar, and then old one. 
like it. And actually, Alpha bought one of those. So it's just good to know that there are ways to do things and thinking about your collector and taking care of them and, and, and making sure they know what you're doing is right up at the top there. So yep. communication. Well, not is, do you know that's my, uh, my hot button is communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, yeah. Well, good. Well, Dan, I don't know that we have a whole lot of other feedback. That you have. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's uh, let's move on to the next one. And Daniel, thanks for showing up and, and being here with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good day. You too. Thanks. Okay. So uh, this one, this is one of those ones that as soon as I saw it, this just the opening image um, for the OpenSea link, I had to pick this one because this is such vibrant, beautiful colors. Um, and to me, this collection really works super well. Like every piece works really well in this collection. Um, this is, and I'm, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna butcher this, I'm sure, but our artist on this one is, <laughs> it's, F F <laughs> I can't even say that. F I think it's Dylic. F F Is that what you said? Dylic. No, no, no. I think it's, uh, I think it's a, F is the initial. I think it's Dalek is the. Uh, oh, okay. I could be. Oh, yes, you're, you're right. You're right. Here we go. F Dalek U R U Y R. And do, do we have them in the room with us? No, I don't I see so. them. Yeah. Okay. I see. Well, as I was, as I'm clicking through here, um, these are, these are gorgeous images, like some of the most vibrant colors that I've seen in the NFT space. And, and, and I wanted to just dig in a little bit. So first of all, um, in this collection, I wanted to show the methods you rural areas use the products produced by the summer in winter. Of course, my photos were influenced by the vibrant colors and contrasts of Anatolia. Edition one of one photographer F. Dilek Uyar. And we've got a website here to get us to the artist's work. Um, Let's take a look at some of these. This is the cover image for the collection. And it's sold. <laughs> what a beautiful image. And we've yeah. got we've got a, a description of what's going on here. We have um oh look at this. Awarded in IPA International Photographers. So this is yeah, this is an award winning photograph. Edition one of one size photographer. F following all the rules, doing all the things. Pixel, Pixel Pete bought this. Not surprising. And Renee Campbell owns the other one there. Uh, so two of these are sold. Um, it's, this has definitely got some. Good Look at this. Already. Holy cow. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> really great work. I'm super impressed. Uh, look at this one here as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm in life on in Bjorka, uh, or however you say that one, but yeah these are this is really good the, the descriptions are all there i would again tie it back to the collection itself um but other than that uh you know i think the additions there the photographers there you could always include a little bio info in the individual image description so as those move around um there's some of that information carried um but yeah hey, this is Group. From a purely from a purely phot photograph uh, photography standpoint, look at this photo. Yeah, that was one I had open. Yeah. Look at look at the look at the motion of the stone, and just the blur happening there, and then just the the dusting of all of this this corn meal over here on the ground, and the way the way it's kind of staining the the mat. And one of the things I love is that she's not afraid. Like these deep shadows, and the highlights are are like this is such a super contrasty, but she really did a great job. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful work, and this is this is kind of this is into like the photojournalist. So the questions were: Is the collection looking cohesive? <laughs> yes. <laughs> is the pricing right? I think it is fairly priced. There's nothing. 
out of line here. These are there's some good steals in here, and then there's some higher priced. Well, pricing is great. Um, I don't know that there's anything I would do to improve on this. Add a couple more photos if you've got them, but <laughs> it's a good size. No, no reason to add more if you if you don't need to. I just would like to see more because if there's more work like this, I want to see. Yeah, I mean, it it would wouldn't you know just the way it lays out on OpenSea. If there were two more images to put this total collection at ten, um, the collection size doesn't appear to be spelled out anywhere. Um, so there may still be the opportunity to do that. Uh, but yeah, only if there's two more images that would fit well with these. Yeah, I don't have anything else to add except to say I'm, uh, wow. I'm, I'm a fan. This is great work. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was an easy pick when we were skimming yesterday. Keep doing more of this, and if this weren't already bought, <laughs> that's a leap. And I'll, outside my price point, I might have tried to <laughs> pull some ETH together for that. That's a great. Yeah, but again, I mean, that's the one of the most expensive in the whole collection, and it's sold. So exactly, the pricing's right. If anybody's listening and paying attention, think this one right here and this one right here. Yeah, 0.3 E for that. Um, yeah, that's a nice piece. Those are beautiful images. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. Unless you, do you have anything else to add? I don't. Okay. Okay, this one it was another one that we just immediately saw and just had to. We got to add that one, right? <laughs> um. And and part of the reason why we had to add it because at this point there are no sales in this. Right. So we've got an opportunity here to really dig in and say, hey, is there anything that we should any advice we can give that can that can make a difference? Or are we good to go and we just need to go in front of more people? So this one is by uh Fine Art Nico. Um the um I, I was going to see if uh, if they're in the room here. They mentioned that they don't speak uh, English. I don't see don't them in here. Okay. Um, barely understand English. Can listen and translate with software. Okay, cool. So hopefully we will we'll end up with a way for them to translate the recording. But here's here's the thoughts. This was this is a conservation project, for reptiles and amphibians, in my country in France. Um, there's a link to the project and the collection. Um, they'd like to know why the wildlife photo is difficult to be recognized. <laughs> of course, <laughs> Jason's the right person to have here. For <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> and, what are you talking about? And then <laughs> these photos are not retouched, but just optimized in terms of colors and contrast. Do you think that the style of photo does not please because they seem to be retouched? Are my prices low or too high? Okay, so. Let's dig in. Let's look at the collection. Uh, um, first of all, I'm just going to say it right off the bat. This is probably about twice as long as it should be. It needs to be a shorter because people see a paragraph that big and they just go, I'm not, I'm not digging in on that. That being said, um, it does describe in here, my images are optimized only in Lightroom and Photoshop. My post-processing consistent rebalancing the levels, making colors brighter and playing contrast. I would leave all of that out of the you don't need to talk about your pro your process. Um, you don't need to apologize for it. Uh, right. Ultimately, there's so much work that is so heavily manipulated in this space. Don't worry about that. That's not a thing. Um, in the wildlife space, eventually, maybe it'll come up. But the fact that you don't do a lot of that stuff is going to come out. And you you mentioned here the blurs are obtained by many parameters, including <laughs> a 400 millimeter 2.8. <laughs> That's right. So. Right. I don't know that that's a description, a thing I would add to your description. I think that's a story you need to tell when you're presenting your work. And maybe that means it goes in your descriptions on Twitter when you're sharing the work. Um, yeah. Maybe it goes in the individual pieces to say, hey, I shot this from a mile away with 400 mil, <laughs> you know, 400 meters away. 400. That being said, let's kind of dig in and look at these. Um, and I'll just say flat out, pricing 0.15 is more than fair. This is you're priced just in the right spot for a collector who doesn't have a lot of sales yet. I think 0.15 is a great spot to be. I think this is a really cohesive group. Um, you know, without uh, a ton of editing, I think the color uh, is consistent across the pieces. I think 
I like the length of these descriptions. I know it's it's big paragraphs, but he's really gone into um, you know what these pieces are. There's a bio attached to each. I like that. What I, what I think is missing is there's a little note at the bottom about the NFT edition package and what's included. Um, but the edition itself isn't. Um, so I think right. that, that's something I would add up to the top that these are one one pieces. Oh, look at this. This is kind of cool. I'm I'm kind of a sucker for the metadata stuff. And look, we've got a bunch of traits. We've got aperture, camera, environment. Great. I like this. I like all that stuff. So I agree. I think that having an addition size added here would be great. And I think that this bio section is great. It might be a little bit a little bit long. Yeah. I'm okay with it. I think I think in that case, because it goes with the image, I think more is is valuable there because it yeah. it keeps it with the image for the collector. I want to look through these and just kind of see them because I'm I'm kind of I'm hoping some collectors are paying attention. These are phenomenal yeah. uh, wildlife images. That is you know, really, I mean, really gorgeous. Yeah, that's, a, that's a 400 uh, F28, isn't it? <laughs> Let's find out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that one's 100. 100 that one's a 400 400. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I'm looking at a different one. But yeah, that one was definitely the detail on that as a 400 millimeter. Look at this one. I mean, the depth of field, like you said, you know, using the big lens and, and shooting it that way, it, it really lets the subject pop. I think that's mm -hmm. really well done. This is a fantastic one. Marmots, yeah. they're so gregarious and they just don't care. They're, they're kind of like honey badgers that way. Fantastic. I love it. You got to get him involved in the wildlife groups. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, that's a that's a good point. There are a couple of wildlife groups out there that, that we can try to. Like, I think Nico's in a few of these things with me. Uh, I know Might that I'm familiar with his Twitter. So also, uh, I'm saying Nico, I'm a, I, I said he I don't know if Nico might be. So I'm just <laughs> I want to leave that open. Yeah, I'm, I'm bad at that. Yeah. Look at this one. This is really, really cool. If it'll load, yeah, that was that's a hundred millimeter, but yeah, again, look at the detail. Really beautiful. I I'm gonna say that I think one one of the things I'm finding with this collection is that the the colors, the pastels are just excellent. I'm really really a fan of the consistency, and I think you could build a very very nice following and reputation of, on this kind of work. I I haven't this is unique. I haven't seen a lot of work that looks like this. Yeah, that's a 100 millimeter macro. It had to be. I, I figured it had to be. Really beautiful work. Okay, so in terms of, you know, this question of whether it's retouched, I think that's just a story you need to tell. You just need to tell a story that I'm, these are, I, I'm a nature photographer and I'm not, there's not a lot of retouching happening here. And that's something you can talk about in your story. When you're tweeting, when you're blogging, when you're doing those kinds of things, this collection works really well. It's a great size. It's a great collect, a great series of kinds of images. Um, I got nothing, nothing here. The only thing, if I'm getting kind of nitpicky, I don't like that there's this one image that is um, the, a different aspect ratio than the. It's such a beautiful image that I let it go. Yeah, it, it does stand out a little bit when you look at it on the full gallery like that. Yeah, but but it's beautiful. It, it really is cool. Um, do you have anything else you want to add? Because I, I think, I mean, I think these are great. The idea of why wildlife photography is difficult to to find a, an audience. Do you want to address that at all? I mean, I I don't. It's hard to say, right? There's there's a few wildlife photographers out there that are doing well. Um, I just think it's it's a, a niche genre, and we've got a small group of of collectors still in this space. When we think about how early everything is, but for me, um, you know, outside of the NFT world, wildlife is is really where I get 
a vast majority of my sales. Um, I do have some wave shots over here in Hawaii that do uh, a good volume too, but the turtles, the seals. So I just think it's a matter of time. Um, and I think we're going to have to be a little bit patient and, and market it. Um, you know, these are, I think ethical wildlife is a really important thing. The conservation tie that he's got that, that is tied to this collection is important. Um, so I think, I think all of those things, uh, it's just a question of marketing and it's a question of time and, and then finding the right audience. I, I, I believe they're out there. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that's kind of where I'm leaning as well. I, I keep hearing this from the wildlife photographers, but then I do see wildlife photography selling. But I think that, there are. And, and I almost feel like this is kind of a weird deal, but I hear a lot of wildlife photographers complaining that there's not people collecting wildlife photography, but I see them selling and I think they think it's worse for them than for, than for other people. And I don't think that's true. Yeah, I think it, it just is the perception is space. Like people said, you know, the, the Twitter algorithm shows you everybody else selling. It feels yeah. like everybody else is selling a piece a day. But when you sit and talk with the individual photographers, they aren't. It, I mean, there are certainly collections that go on a run and, and you can have one collection. Actually, come to think of it, um, uh, Kat Levengood uh, out of New Mexico has a wild horses collection that I know six of them sold in the same day. That's a wildlife collection that had a run on it. And, and I think it just is when the, when the eyeballs hit it and one person picks it up and then you get that tweet out that says this sold and that sold, um, I think other collectors tune in at that point. So I, yeah. I think it's just, the, it's just the nature of how the algorithm makes it look like everybody is selling all the time. And I, I just don't think it's true. Right, right. And I think I'll just, I'll, I'll throw this out there for myself. I, I put out some street photography months and months ago because I saw other people selling street and film type work and I didn't sell any right off the bat. And I, and it was hot film and art was, or film and street was really hot and I just didn't. And I thought that that was popular. What I realized is no, it, it was just, it's being part of the individual parts of the community and connecting the right collectors. I don't think it's that one kind of art sells and one doesn't. Well, and the other thing I think is, is you just have to be true to what your art is. So if this is the work that you're passionate about, that's going to come through. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, trying to, I was going to pull up the next artist and I realized that. Right. This, this is, is the one where the Sloika collection exists, but it's the. Yeah. I'm going to pull up, so I'll pull up the, so this is Armand, um, and this is the section, but he also had a whole other set of, I think I can, I can yeah, pull the images are Here embedded we go. in the, um... so let me, let me do this. I'm going to, I'm just going to grab, I'm going to change my, what I'm sharing to stop streaming. Ooh. I'm going to change to the other screen here we go you and while you're working on no? that you know the, yeah. the question that comes with this is i keep there you go you got them um the, as i scroll back the question was you know i've got this piece this collection out on sloika i've been thinking about doing this um and and i think this kind of follows the earlier question about the india festival should I release more India Festival work or should I, you know, should I release something different? And to me, that's that's where this works. He's got the abstract liquid movements collection that's out there on Sloika. Um, that that series has nine pieces and they're all still available. But he wants to put out something else. And to me, this is different. Um, and they're stunning. Tell them what we yeah, tell them what we thought. Because we immediately we looked at these and we're like we like I like the liquid movement. It it is beautiful right, work. Um it's it reminds me of you know work by people like TJ Thorne, um like people like Tara Workman. Uh it's beautiful work. But then I pull up these and these are just a whole different level and it's a completely right. different style. Um I'm a, I'm Can a big, I say big... something? Oh yeah, please. Yeah, you hear me? Uh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I didn't want it to interrupt. Um, 
So first, uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, it's really great. I've been hearing a lot of AMR since a few months, but never submitted because I didn't have a collection uh, online. Uh, so thank you. Uh, I hear what you say, and uh, it's great to hear actually because it, it comforts the idea that uh, that maybe putting something else out there, showing another part of my work, could be positive rather than negative. Uh, because I've been hearing a lot that uh, putting two collections was uh, tricky because it was like uh, doing self concurrency. But uh, but there is case where I think it, it could be good for the artist, and uh, in that case, that that's really was the question I had for you guys, uh, uh, as uh, as photographers who, who have already made it in this space. Uh, if I better should wait or just should go. So so I hear what you say. Th those pieces are great, and I'm very happy with them. If I choose the liquid movement for the first collection. It was because uh, I just felt emotionally connected to this one most than any other of my work, and I wanted to give it a try. But uh, but I realized it, it might be a bit adventurous because it, it's different. You, you know, it's it, it's a different kind of work, and uh, and so so I really wanted to hear your feedback on that. Thank well, you. Well, I'd be yeah. hesitant to say. But any of us have made it in this space. I think I think we're all still sort of learning and, and growing. And so certainly I think this has been my approach uh, is trying different things. So I've I've got those wildlife shots up on open sea. I've got the waves that are over on foundation. And I've got a couple other pieces floating. So to me, I think you're going to find different. You're going to appeal to different collectors with each of these. Um, not to say that somebody wouldn't look at the liquid movements and find it beautiful and collect a piece and then see these stunning lands. I mean, these just are amazing really? um, and collect from both. But I think you, you basically, you by sharing two different pieces, and I hear people say, you know, I get tired of showing the same things over and over on Twitter. And to me, I don't really have that problem. On Monday, my seals are out. On Tuesday, you know, it's something else. On Wednesday, I've got waves. And and then I pull, you know, from different places and I share work that isn't minted at all. Um, and so for me, I think I think it, it's good to have something else to talk about rather than constantly going back to the same piece. Well, and let me let me add something to that. I think the idea of the liquid movements. And I'm I'm right there with you, Armand. I, I have a collection on Sleika that I shared. The, the pieces, well, I'm not going to say that they're not good enough to stand on their own. I'm saying that they actually work better as part of a collection. But then let me just say that this image right here, this is a full-on standalone. This is, this is a massive, amazing work. I don't think it needs to even be in a collection to sell. Or to, right. be, or to represent you. So maybe it's worth thinking about that the liquid movements, like these are great and they're really beautiful and they will find a certain kind of collector, but maybe you can release this as a standalone um, on your own contract or on super rare or on, while you still are also selling collections of this kind of and, and I'll just, I'll back up. This is a little bit, could be a little bit controversial. I know that heck even collectors that I that collect from me might disagree. I think I really do believe that the idea of scarcity is you need to as a as an artist, you need to think about who's telling you why and how to be scarce and think about why they're doing it and think about how it serves you as an artist. If you've got beautiful work that you're holding on to because you're trying to inflate the value of other work, like that's that is a strategy. That's something you can do. But if you're holding back work that is key to who you are as an artist, maybe maybe think about why you're doing it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I just yeah. think that there's we place a lot of artificial um, constraints on ourselves because we're worried about, you know, we have collectors telling us, don't release new collections until you've sold out. Well, but who does that benefit? Um, maybe it's okay for you to release new work, or, but maybe you, it's not. And you have to decide, are you just flooding the market with new stuff that 
um, that blocks your other work or distracts from your other work, or are you releasing new, really interesting, a key part of who you are as an author? That's the decision you have to make. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, the, the tricky part with, with those two parts of my work were, were like, uh, uh, at least this is, this is what, how I see it personally. The, the both parts are a very important part of who I am as an artist. So, so yes, maybe I should have considered it better before for choosing the, the, the team and the series for, for my first. But, uh, but, I, but wouldn't yes. go I wouldn't even second guess yourself that way. These are, this is different work. And I think you're okay. I don't think you made a mistake. Uh, I think you just need to, you're going to need to promote it. You're going to need to right. make sure this work gets in front of people. But these are, okay. these are different kinds of work and it's okay to have them both out. I agree. Okay, great. That's pretty great to hear, actually. Uh, I was really hoping for such kind of answer, but uh, so yes, thank you, really. Really, I, I think now, now I know what I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're now good. I'm envy. I'm looking at the details. You get that D850 for these uh, liquid movements. <laughs> These are these are really beautiful. I think I think it really comes down to marketing uh, on the liquid movements, but I certainly don't think it'll hurt you to have, uh, you know, some of these landscapes out there as well. Okay, that, that's really great to hear. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Dan. Uh, all that feedback. Uh, I'm really happy to read that, and uh, uh, let's see how we how it goes. <laughs> and and in case it wasn't obvious, we like the slick out. So. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Slack like did an amazing job actually with the with their platforms, and uh, they even updated it, it uh, like a few days ago with, with a new display for the collection, will look even better. So, yep. so yeah, they, they're doing great, and they are yep. custom uh, tokens that that exist only for that collection is also like, like really really precious, I think, because it yep. it means a lot for for the I think for the collector point of, point of view, it, it brings also some kind of values because we were talking about the the one on one in the description, et cetera. so but but the fact there is, for example, for this collection, only nine liquid token because it's how I call them uh, will actually exist. It's also one more proof than there is only uh, one for each piece. so so I think it has value by, by itself. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I keep, I'm scrolling through these and I want to say, okay, uh, number five, Liquid Dance, that's my favorite. And then I look at seven and I look at, you know, man, these are, it, it's really hard for me to pick which one, uh, they're, they're great. I, I just think, I mean, good luck with this collection and, and good luck with the landscape, but I, I think the work is there. It's just going to be a question of marketing. I agree. Okay. And, and Thank you very much. You bet. Well, let's move on because we're we're getting uh, let's keep it kind of tight. I was gonna say also like they gotta add search. <laughs> that's my and I've already yeah, told yeah. Ev. I've already told Ev that he knows that's my my number one quest. Okay, let's move on to our next one. We got this thirty is, minutes. We got three collections. We're right on time, Dan. We can, pull, we can pull this. Do we have three? I thought we had four. I think we only have three left. Oh yeah, you're right because I already had. Perfect. We're good. Okay, so My Memories and Monochrome um, by Bon Du Day. Um, and I'm going to see if I can get to the questions in here. There we go. And I had seen Bon Du Day was in the, in the, yeah, yeah, he's in the room. Good. Yeah. He or she. So let's, let's dig in a little bit. Um, bon Du, welcome to the, to the space. Do you have anything you wanted? Do you want to say hi? Hi, Dan. Hello. Uh, am I audible? <laughs> Welcome. Uh, hi. Uh, actually, uh, this collection has been lazy minted. Uh, it hasn't been listed yet. Uh, I chose another collection of mine, which I uh, listed today only. But my uh, It would be my Genesis collection on Ethereum. I, I was going to mint this, but I had that too. So the, my other collection was on Polygon. So I migrated that from Polygon to Ethereum, and 
I have benched uh, this collection for a while now, but I would like to refine it for uh, as much as I can before I can uh, launch is this it. One, this is the one that went live? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you can see this, but I already like this one. Yeah. That's beautiful. But I wanted to go this one. I like this one. And and, uh, and I thought this was an, an interesting opportunity, Vondu, because like you said, sure. you haven't listed this yet. Um, and I think there is an opportunity to kind of tighten it up a little bit. Um, you know, monochrome, and, and obviously we had that question earlier uh, coming from, I think, Jose uh, about black and white in this space. And so I think, I think there's a spot for black and white. You've got some really beautiful images. Uh, but one of the things that stands out for me with, with black and white is you really have to have that contrast of bright white and dark. So I think the key to my heart is is one of the strongest pieces in here. I got to get better at hitting the favorite button on these when I'm looking at them. Um, and so when I look at this whole collection, the unifying piece right now is the black and white. And I think you can tighten it up a little bit thematically um, by pulling the mountains in together. And so the key to my heart was really the one that struck me. Well, I mean, Moonland's up there too. Those two really stood out. And then you've got a frame of human scale and a vast valley. So I almost think you could shrink this collection down a little bit and focus on the mountains themselves. Um, Uh, uh may i add something yes yeah actually uh, i um uh, i don't have enough mountain monochrome shorts i think uh, there's five or six here and uh actually uh, i love shooting in monochrome and initially i thought in the uh, if this collection was a dynamic collection where i keep adding monochrome pictures but uh, i don't know i haven't that's why i haven't listed it yet uh, because I want to refine it as much as possible. Uh, yeah. So l let's let's talk about that a little bit. The I think what Jason was kind of getting at is that when we're looking at this, we're we're seeing some really strong work. This m these mountain images are really strong because they have really really nice contrast, but they also have really great tone out. Um, some of the other images have that as well. And then some of these just feel like they are, like this is a really interesting image. So many great tonalities happening. But but then to look at this one here, Life and Rest, rest, rest to me, um, this just doesn't hold up next to the others. It's It doesn't have quite the same, uh, it's not telling as compelling of it. And, and I would say, I don't think these belong in this. The only thing bonding them to me as a viewer is that they're black and white. And I, and I feel like you have to really think about black and white can't be your theme. Your black and white can be your medium, but your but you need to have a theme that carries the images together um, beyond that. And so, and this, thing, go ahead. When I, when I hear you say you don't have enough mountains, I don't think that's true. Um, one of the one of the collections that I put out only has five pieces in it. And I think you're starting to see some of those smaller collections out there. So I think there's an opportunity to trim this down um, and focus on the mountains that work together thematically. You've got four that I see quickly, um, Moonland, The Key to My Heart, A Vast Valley, and A Frame of Human Scale. And then it's a question of what others fit there. Um, Shining Behemoth, to me, isn't quite as strong. It's a little too dark. Um, and similarly, a regal scene uh, and a perfect moment, they don't really have the same pop to me. So if you had those four, even if you only had one more mountain and the other, I mean, if you go to those four, you've got kind of a landscape theme. The other one that really stood out to me, whether it's in this collection or another one, is a Valley of Mon Monochrome. I think that's another really strong image. Um, so I, th I think you you just, you could release this as a small collection and, and you're right, maybe it's not my memories of, of 
in monochrome, um, maybe your title ties back to the mountain theme instead. Um, but to me, those four were the strongest mountain images altogether. And then the valley of monochrome was really the other image that stood out to me in this group. Yeah. If I can reiterate, though, I think the biggest thing you need to you need to pull back is figure out what is your theme. Because monochrome, I don't think that can be a thing that I mean, I'm not saying it can't. I'm just saying I think you're kind of doing monochrome a disservice by having that be your theme. I think it's I think the, them being black and white is a really choice, but including images that don't have a thematic connection between them doesn't really. And there's a few here that I think I like honestly like this. I'm not saying it's a bad image. I'm saying it doesn't doesn't really fit, and it's not really telling a compelling story. Um, I think same kind of with this one. Um, and I, and I think probably this one too. Yeah, I would agree. But see, the thing is, this is beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Same with this one. This one. I like this one a lot. I like this one too, and I love this one. Um, so that being said, the questions you had asked, you asked about, are the descriptions okay? And I think as we go into the individual pieces, all of your, you've done all the stuff that you've been asked to do in, in the meta jungle world, right? You've added all these things. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I like this. You've got good descriptions of exactly what's happening, which is, which is great. Um, so you might want to double check. I'm just looking at Moonland. You've got a typo, um, so it should be clear skies. You may want to uh, go through and proofread some of these. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't notice that. I I will absolutely do that. Well, this is this is a we try not to nitpick too much at you, but this is our your chance to for us to help you get it right before it's minted, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we say it in love. honestly. You know, when you say you'll go through it, I, I strongly recommend asking somebody else to look at it as somebody that I do marketing and, and writing uh, in addition to my photography. It is really hard to see your own mistakes because you see what you think is supposed to be there. Um, but as soon as somebody else looks at it, it jumps. So worth worth asking somebody to go through your descriptions and, and make sure they're all square. Yeah. And I think if I were going to give you another piece of advice just in terms of calling down the, I don't know if you have other photographer that are, that, you know, that you review each other's work. This is one of those things where, um, you know, leaning into this monochrome idea or is to know that when you're shooting in color and, and I've seen your work, your color work, it is really beautiful and you have great tone. tonality is all you have. when You're shooting black and white. And so you have to lean into that and you ask, does this have enough tonality to tell the story? Those are the questions you want to ask. When I see things like Moonland, I'm getting Ansel Adams vibes. Yeah. Same here. Like this, this blacked out, beautiful, you know, bluebird sky. Like, yep. I'm get, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting like dark. And this. So. Just you know, get more feedback on them. Um, they're great. You have some. You have a great eye. You've got some great work here. This collection. Hello. Uh, can you repeat uh, just what you just said for the thirty seconds before? I just got dis disconnected. Oh, sure. I think that getting feedback from photographers you respect, uh, you know, friends that that know your work, I think that's helpful. Um, in this case, you have some really beautiful images, but I feel like. You just have to make sure that they they pop, that they that they really have. It's easy for us to think it's good, but if it doesn't have strong tonality, it's not going to work. As in black and white, in particular, and yep. and if you missed it, you know, we look at Moonland and we look at the key to my heart, and you do get that Angela Adams, that blacked out sky on the key to my heart. It just is a stellar image. So, and um, and and Open Sea kind of sucks for panos, but man, this this image. Gosh, like I'm just gonna zoom in here a little. Really cool. I would love to see a platform that does this justice, because this is cool. 
thank you so much and uh, if i uh, just uh, do that i mean i pick up the uh, mountain shots in monochrome and make a different collection migrate these uh, images from uh, from this collection to that collection and list it let's say and uh, should i keep these other uh, others lazy minded or should i just uh, burn them well the nice thing about OpenSea is you don't have to burn anything. If if it's a lazy mint, you just delete them. Right. But you can also just move them to a different collection. If you want to keep them. Yes. And you don't you don't want to sell them, just put them in a different collection um, and don't list them. Or move yeah, so, them. So uh, what I I'm thinking now after hearing is that uh, I'll create another uh, collection and then migrate these uh, mountain shots to that collection. You can easily change uh, collections, go to edit and do that. And yeah. that way it can be a small five piece collection. Yeah, yeah I like that. I think that's a, a good approach. And that it's one of the things, you know, I don't collection size is what it is. And I think they're they're kind of numbers. But when you have a small collection, you know, a lot of artists sort of set that goal to sell a collection out and it gives you that opportunity with a small cohesive group. Um, yeah, I think I think there's a good opportunity to do that with these pieces. Yeah. I'd love to see a small collection uh, like that. So speaking of which, let's move on to the next one. Um, also monochrome. Um, this one is um, Obar <laughs> Oberi Jesse, Oberi Jassy. And I wanted to say, I want to see if Jassy is in the room here with us. Can you guys hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, good. Well, so this this one I wanted to move on to, and I don't know when we were reviewing these last night. This collection, I I thumbs up this one the first right when I saw it within a couple minutes of him of, of he or she posting it. Um, I'm this is really beautiful work, and you know we're kind of digging into. We thought it would be interesting to kind of. Look at this one, also monochrome, and to, and to really talk about what does it mean to 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 present work in monochrome and how do you do that in a way that makes sense and and it is super compelling. So, this particular collection. Oh, go ahead, Jason. Oh no, no, I'm fine. Okay, Jassy, you there? I can see you're trying to talk, but I'm not hearing yeah. anything. <laughs> We can't we can't hear you so if we're butchering your name we're sorry <laughs> and if you want to if you want to uh add any notes in the chat um yeah i've got the ama chat li live okay. chat open so you okay. can always go there and i can catch it there so let me let me dig in a little bit here um the things that that we were getting asked was first of all is my collection cohesive or need corrections is this 10 image collection good enough or needs trimming or addition? Is the price, price point right? Um, any other feedback? Um, <laughs> I have a lot of experience, but I'm a toddler in NFT. <laughs> um, am, am I audible now? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. All right, all right. Um, thank you guys for, for doing such a wonderful thing. And uh, I'm glad to be reviewed here today. Um, so I have, Already, you, you're already lead, reading my questions, so um, it will be great that if you can answer that and give me some inputs. I'm, I I have one one or two more questions, but once you finish these, then one short question for the other. Okay. Well, right. let's dig in here a little bit. Uh, Jason, you want to you want to lead off on this? Also, I mean, again, I I think this was a good example of where monochrome works. Um, you've got those beautiful brights on the waterfalls and you've got the dark skies around them. Uh, I thought this collection was very cohesive to me. Uh, all 10 images fit well here. I mean, if you, if you had another image, you wanted to swap one out, maybe broken promises is one I would take a closer look at. Um, I do like the, I mean, I know open sea sort of shuffles them. So the way I've got them open. You've got the four waterfalls on the top, and then you've got those um, long exposures across the bottom. I just the 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 tone is consistent across all ten pieces. 
you've got some nice bright white clouds and you've got some dark shadows. Um, so to me, this was a very cohesive group. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, in terms of, yeah, in terms of cohesiveness, I mean, you've nailed it here. I agree. I have the same exact thought. I think that Broken Promises, while it is a really, it's a beautiful image, it's lacking some of the same kind of tonality. Um, and is I can see that it's this cool, long, you know, this long exposure. Um, but it's a different vibe. It, it's right. It's a, it's a, it's a beach that feels, all of these feel kind of mountainy. Um, you know, I'm, we, we got some Iceland things happening here, right? Um, and then this one just feels, it doesn't, well, maybe here's the thing. It doesn't have that heavy, heavy black point that the rest of the images have. Right, there's, right. there's a little bit here in the middle, but it makes the whole image feel a lot brighter than the rest of it. And, and for contrast like this, and this works. Yeah. <laughs> this really, really works. So if I were going to maybe think about it, I wouldn't just delete it. I would probably add some place if you've got it. But man, um, I mean, come on. This is, this is gorgeous. <laughs> this is freaking gorgeous. I mean, this is some of the best itself, I've ever that, seen from here. Yeah, that, that fall is probably the first one that I tagged. Um, that's just a beautiful exposure. Boom. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so getting the questions here, um, let's let's take a look here. You've got your you've got your description. Um, photography me is going deep in my inner self. No matter where I am, it's always like a mirror. Landscape photography, it's a battle, fighting the forces of nature, waiting the long, always trying to find an angle, the and again reaching for the perfect shot. Photographers all over the world, in together, living the same, living the same dream, fighting. Through the set of images, I try to showcase the immense beauty of bestowed with in my own unique way. Using black and white as a medium, images try and reach your soul. Hope that these images resonate with you. Um, I think this is uh, this is good. I would probably proofread again, um, make sure because it's it's a little broken, and I think if you were to get a couple opinions, you could probably tighten this up a little bit. Um, it it feels a little bit nebulous. Maybe it's it doesn't communicate a, a strong enough theme for these images. Nature's whispers is a great theme. So how does I want you to tie that together here better, if that makes sense? Um, All right, it does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. When you go look at the individual images, these are great. You have good ex good descriptions. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Weather weather was really bad. When I <laughs> Um, continuously raining. I, I love that you've got individual information about the piece. You've got a description of where it is. That's great. If I look through these, yeah, same thing here. Good descriptions. Yeah, I thought these descriptions were all good. They have all the key pieces of information. So, um, I thought the individual item descriptions are solid. Yeah. So I think that 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 part um, is great. We've already talked about cohesion. We've talked about any corrections. I think there's little little typo, not, not typo, but kind of grammatical things you want to look through and just proofread everything and have somebody else look at it and and give you some feedback on them. Um, pricing. I think you've got a pretty broad range here. Um, not not real broad, but point point one two up to point two five, I think. And I think that that's yeah reasonable. I don't I don't see any problem with that. Um, you've you've already sold one at point one two. Um, th one of the things that's kind of interesting is you just have to decide for yourself why are you pricing them at different price points. You know. Um, if they're priced because they're important to you, like this one and this one, are they priced higher because they are were harder to get to because you feel like they're rarer? I think those are good things to those are good decisions for you to go through, a good process to go through. Um, but I don't see any problem with the pricing on these. All right, uh, all right. What do you? Anything from you, Jason, on that? 
think yeah, uh, yeah. No, please, please go ahead. I, I think the pricing is is good, and and I think you, Dan, I think you know I do this too. Um, you know, there's some of the images on the low end, and then the ones that are that I know about the time and the effort that went into them end up being priced higher. So I think that makes sense, and it's a a good range here. Yeah, and I think a, here's a good example. While I see the lyrical cascade and the fall are both on the lower side of things. And I'll just say this, you, you've been there. I've never been to, yet I recognize the So to me, those are not as unique. They're beautiful images, but they're not unique views. Dark Secret, though, even though I've seen that view, I've never seen it with that kind of one. I think it makes yeah. sense for that one to be a little more rare. So I think that makes sense. All right, all right. Uh, can I ask uh, a question here? Please. Yeah. Uh, so I also feel that Broken Promises is probably uh, somewhere down the line a slight misfit in this collection. And I was a little apprehensive uh, before uploading, but then I, I don't know for what reason I still went ahead with it. Uh, uh, so I, I will rethink about including this, uh, keeping it here and and um, I might probably delete it from here and just keep the nine uh, piece collection. So, because another question uh, that I had was that uh, whether this number of 10 images that I have, one is sold out from that, is it good enough or should one include more or should one trim because um, uh, there's, there's no right answer to this probably because uh, at times um, including more might stretch it too far um, and uh, um, trimming it might make it a little less for the uh, collector to really feel what is the kind of story that I'm going to tell. So what is your thought on that? Um, I think the, you're, you already answered it by. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tend to like eight, nine, 10, maybe 12 pieces. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of my that's kind of my thing. Yeah. Yeah, I I went with twenty on one of mine, but I I think if I had to do it again, that that ten twelve number ten to fifteen is is a good spot. So I think I think this is a nice group, um, it, especially if you've got I I mean broken promises belong somewhere, just maybe not here, and if you've got one you could replace it with, then you can keep ten or you can just use nine. Yeah. All yeah, right, but these, these right. are beautiful though. Well, we've got we've got one more artist we're gonna we wanted to cover today. And so uh, Dan, 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 sorry to uh, step in. Uh, this is Samia, and I just wanted to you know have a quick uh, question about this collection by Jesse because Jesse is uh, you know one of my mentors here. I'm so happy to see his collection out here. Sure. So just wanted to ask the fall picture. You know, uh, I think that fall picture is one of the most iconic images in this collection, in my opinion. Uh, do you think that if he had gone, uh, you know, with a slightly higher pricing of maybe 0.4 or 0.45, would it still have done justice to it? Because I feel it's a, it's a fabulous image. And uh, is it possible? Is it because I saw Dialect's collection before this, and she did have one hook image that had such a huge value. I mean, at least a sizable value. What do you think you know, about this one? You know, I don't, I don't disagree. I, I think that it could, but like I said already, I this is a tough one because when I look at the image, it's, it's really beautiful. It has a very like, it has a really cool filmy vibe to it, right? I mean, you've got these, this great long exposure streaks through the skies. It's really beautiful. Pricing is such a weird deal because while you could maybe get 0.4, the, a collection like this that doesn't have a lot of sales, you know, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.25, those are kind of where people expect um, artists to sell their first few pieces. And this particular collection, if you've got other collections where you've sold things at the 0 0.3, 0 0.4 range, then maybe maybe it makes sense to price it that high. I just feel like there's some level at which, you know, I just sold a piece for 0 0.1 earlier this week. <laughs> and I've also sold, you know, but and then before that, my last one was 0 0.25 a month ago. So, 
I don't think there's any like rhyme or reason or right or wrong to how things are priced. I have new some brand new work I'm getting ready to point five, but it's because it means more to me. So it's 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 a personal decision for the artist. You, maybe you could command point four, but you just have to decide what does it mean to you and what will you be happy with. All right. I mean that's that's an interesting insight. But what yeah, Dan, yeah. I've you know what I thought. I mean the reason why I'm asking this question is you know because I have talked to a few collectors before. I guess if they see in one particular collection that maybe one or two pieces are slightly premium, maybe their point of interest slowly but surely goes towards that piece. Maybe it could work in terms of uh, how that psyche works. I mean maybe that should have could have actually gotten into. So that's probably one reason that I probably asked this question. So oh sure. So and I'll, and I'll say though for me. When I'm looking at this collection, this is the winner. All right. <laughs> might, all right. <laughs> might be because it's a little higher, but because I'm a photographer and I know. I know this is the this is the this is the gem. For me. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> well, let's go ahead and move on. We got we're we're right up at Jason has to um here pretty quick, and I've got a bunch of stuff to do too. That's good. We got one collection left, so we can give uh, Phil some attention here. I don't think he's uh, in the space. Yeah, he's in Europe, so it's probably middle of the night there. Yeah. Um, Jason, you already knew this work, saw it, and I would love for you to kind of dive in. I'm I'm looking for the the feedback. Yeah, when, when we look at when we look at you know the question earlier about wildlife, right? Um, this is. Joe Garcia is a, a recognized wildlife photographer. He's he's got uh, what seven sales in this collection already. Um, this particular collection, I know uh, from engaging with him that it's uh, hundred percent of the proceeds are going back to um, a project on raising awareness for the Arctic fox. Um, honestly, that's one of the things that stands out to me when I look at the collection description. I think that needs to be called uh, out louder. It's, I, it says the full profits of this NFT collection, but for some reason that doesn't stand out to me in this block paragraph. So I don't know how to, to call a little more attention to that. Um, but then the images in here are just exceptional. So, yeah. um, you know, so really, we started looking at this one <laughs> and I was like, yeah, we got to include this. This is a, <laughs> this is like a, um, a model for how you build a collection. Yeah. And and even though the foxes, you know, you've got them kind of going from the dark coloring uh, to the, the bright white. I mean, th this is natural phases for these foxes. Um, and so I think you've got some, uh, and, and again, he's, he's had some sales out of this collection. I don't actually believe there were any questions tied to this post. It was, it was looking for a review. Um, and as you and I talked about yesterday, um, it looks like uh, the land claim piece is owned by Artie Love. So that piece um, was one, it's a long distance shot of the fox in the landscape. I thought that piece sort of stood out a little different. And then we also talked about Arctic dangers, which I agree with you. This is an exceptional image. But when you look at the rest of this collection, which is so focused on those intimate fox portraits, the little speck on the on the horizon in the distance just doesn't quite fit with me. It for me. This one, has, this one has some National Geographic sort of vibes to it, though. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think this is a one one that stands alone and doesn't need to be in the in the collection at all. Um, okay. I, I think it's an exceptional image. There's there's no complaints there. Um, I just think the rest of the collection is such an intimate portrait of these foxes um, that it it just felt out of place. This one's my favorite. Yeah, I knew you were going to go there. And the other one, uh, Day of the Storm, um, which is just above it, a snowstorm, is is exceptional. But looking at Day of the Storm um, with with the, all the snow in the air, those these are just beautiful. This almost reminds me of uh, Irene Rudnick. I don't know if you're familiar with her. She does all these really gorgeous portraits of uh, like children in Russia. Mm, I want to yeah. say Russia, somewhere in the in the former USSR, with like super long lenses, like 
135 F2 with just blown out Boca snow. And this is this is really cool. Well, and of course, we picked two favorites that have already been sold. So the other one that really stands out to me um, is the robber. Uh, so I think that's the um, that's the the one with the egg in the mouth. If you get a good close look at that, um, this, this is another beautiful shot. That is amazing. <laughs> I mean, I don't have other than that one image that I'd be tempted to to move to a standalone piece. Um, I mean, that almost feels like something you could run an auction to benefit the whole. Like when this collection is sold out, you throw this up as a one-one somewhere um, with an auction to benefit the whole project. Uh, because it, it is, I agree, it's an exceptional image. Um, but to me, the rest of this collection is so intimate, and that one kind of jumps out a little bit. Yeah. Well, I think, so the reason we included this one, there's a little bit of, we had a chance to, I'm, gonna, I'm planning that in future, if, as Mike, if Mike and I are hosting, I want to talk a little bit more about which ones we're featuring. Jason and I actually had a phone call yesterday and we walked through what we wanted to feature. Even though Phil didn't ask for specific, a, a lot of specific feedback, I thought it was really great to end, and Jason and I thought it was great to end our, um, our AMA session today with this one, primarily because it works so well. Because it's a great example of what a collection should look like, of, of how you curate, of how you put together a body of that works well together. This is, I just think that this tells a, a really compelling story. You've got play, you've got inquisitiveness, you've got harsh, the harsh realities of what life looks like for in the world. You've got this kind of interesting, playful look at like, hey, what animals do <laughs> stealing eggs, and you've got also different colors. You've got different focal lengths. You've got pups. You've got you know a whole, the whole range of. Things. It's just it's telling a really compelling story, and it's for a really good cause. Um, this has a lot of different pieces that. I think tell a com they, they tell a compelling story for a collector. And as if you're a collector, you should be paying attention. And if you're paying attention as an artist, look at the ways this is put together. Look at the way that and and aside from maybe the couple things we mentioned. Take note. Yeah, I mean this is this is really well curated. I think that's the, the real key is curation is is very important. And, and these pieces are beautifully curated. Yeah. Well, I think, so we have kind of, we kind of, I'm here, we kept it a pretty tight, we only went five minutes over. Um, I'm really grateful for all of the artists submitting. Um, one of the things I just wanted to say is that, gosh, there's, we have so many submissions. And I, um, even though we broke the rule by uh, including one that didn't really ask for a specific thing, um, the more specific your questions be, uh, the better for us in terms of doing. Um, and uh, our goal here is to give you constructive feedback. And sometimes it's sometimes it's about the photos themselves. Sometimes it's about the curation. But we we appreciate all of the the ways you think about it and and the ways that you ask the questions. It means a lot to us. And uh, keep keep the submissions coming. I think I'm going to talk with Mike about trying. to figure out a way for us um i don't want to tell you to wait to submit until until we announce it but i'm gonna tell you that there's a, a better likelihood we're gonna see it if you wait if you submit right now it's it's gonna be a little bit it's a little iffy about whether we're gonna see it. so with that being said um goon boss mom meta girl thank you so much once again for uh having us and hosting this space i hope that it gives some heavy duty uh, help to our meta jungle members able to put together their collections and, and curate their own work 
Thank you guys so much, Dan and Jason. I think the feedback you gave was awesome. And mm -hmm. I always enjoy this time to get to learn more about the artwork and the artists behind it. So I know personally, I enjoy this space very much and I hope everybody else did as well. And I also appreciate your feedback about how, you know, the submission process and how we'll go about that. Um, Boss Mom and I have been sharing a little bit of information too, to help kind of help um, make sure that also people that are coming and participating in the AMAs and then submitting their requests um, have priority too, because we do want to recognize those that are active in the community. So exactly. Well, and that's something we should, I, we should maybe chat about that. Um, um, you and me and, and maybe, and Mike, when he's, when he's yep. back, from <laughs> it'd be great to figure out a way to kind of organize it because we want to give a fair shake to as many people as we can, but it's just, it's yep. a little overwhelming. <laughs> it's hard to go back over the last week because you could scroll and scroll and scroll and you only see the last. <laughs> Completely agree. <laughs> so we'll be in touch about that very soon. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you guys very Thanks much. Thanks for letting me pinch it for, for Mike while he's on vacation. And I appreciated the opportunity. Absolutely. Thanks for saying yes. <laughs> Thanks for saying yes, Jason. It was fun to hang out with you. <laughs> yeah, Thanks, yep. Jason. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys.